Are you having a hard time figuring out what to get dad for Father's Day? You should check out Row One Brand's Vintage Pictorum Gallery. They have America's best sports art. With over 7,200 historic sports prints, you're assured to find something unique for dad this Father's Day. Instead of a boring old tie, get him a historic baseball photo taken by Henry High Sandum at the historic Polo Ground Stadium in New York City during the 1894 Temple Cup. Or, if he's an NFL buff, check out the 1963 vintage NFL poster. These are so good looking that you'll be amazed how they turn out. Shop now at sportshistorynetwork.com slash row one and save 15% off your order. Thanks for listening to the Pigskin Tales podcast. This story was written and produced by your host, Ross Bliley, edited by Nikki Bliley. You can follow me on social media outlets such as Facebook and Twitter. You can find the podcast on multiple streaming providers such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. If you like what you hear and want to support my work, visit sportshistorynetwork.com. There you will find 20 other sports history podcasts to browse. If you really love sports, check us out at sportshistorynetwork.com. You can email me questions or provide feedback of the show at pigskintailspodcast at gmail.com. The soundtrack is provided by Kevin McLeod of filmmusic.io. Thanks for your support, and I always appreciate feedback. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Last time on the Pigskin Tales podcast, Red Grange single-handedly beat the mighty Wolverines of Michigan 39-14 at Memorial Stadium on October 18, 1924, before 67,000 screaming fans. After the game, many newspaper outlets were clamoring to the star running back to ask how he did it. Red probably felt larger than life at the moment, but was the same humble man his dad had taught him early on. Including the kickoff, Red astounded and shocked the crowd, scoring four touchdowns on four attempts. He ended the game with five rushing touchdowns and 402 rushing yards. This time on the Pigskin Tales podcast, Red meets an interesting man that wants to change the financial futures of both people. In the end, This meet-and-greet turns out to be the spark that changes the future of professional football entirely. Charles Cassius Pyle, known to some as Cash and Carry, but also known to most people as Cece, was an intelligent, charismatic man who loved people and business. He owned the Virginia Theater in Champaign, Illinois in the 1920s. Author Mike Pearson wrote an article dated for February 2nd of 2020 titled Illini Legends, Lists, and Lore, Cash and Carry Pile. According to Pearson, C.C. was born in 1882 to farmers William and Sidney in Van Wert County, Ohio. When he was eight, Cece's dad passed away from tuberculosis. Flash forward eight years, and at age 16, Cece began to promote races in Delaware, Ohio, because he was always a sports enthusiast. He began with bike races between local boys and a professional bike racer named Barry Oldfield. He made seven bucks a race, and that got him started with his future of sports promotion. Shortly after he started promoting local bike races in Delaware, Cece was diagnosed with the same weak respiratory system his dad had. His mom then decided it was best to send him out west to California, where the air is much cleaner and fresher. In California, Pyle got into the acting business and was his own agent. He met an actress named Dorothy Fisher and eventually got married. In 1910, Cece and Dot moved to Boise, Idaho, and Cece opened up the first Boise Theater 
to take advantage of the trending silent movie industry. Thinking much further into his future, CeCe decided to move to Chicago on his own. He and Dot divorced. Why, you ask? I don't know for sure, but I could guess that it was about money and kids. In 1920, Pyle met and shook hands with a contractor by the name of Almond Stuhlman. Together, along with other theater architects, they built a lavish Italian Renaissance-style movie theater in Champaign. It opened on December 28, 1921, and was named the Virginia Theater after Stuhlman's daughter. Over the years, it's hosted live stage shows and shown silent movies. Many celebrities have played there, including Charlie Chapman and Buster Keaton. The townsfolk frequented the theater, including the students of the University of Illinois. According to the website thevirginia.org, the theater received a $900,000 rehabilitation grant from the state of Illinois in 1999. In 2002, the district started an annual membership drive through direct mail to keep the theater going. According to author Chris Willis, who wrote the book Red Grange, The Life and Legacy of the NFL's First Superstar, Grange and Pyle met sometime before Red's senior season. He wasn't too sure how Pyle and Grange got to be good buddies, however, author Gary Andrew Poole mentioned in his book, The Galloping Ghost, that it was Pyle who befriended Grange during a silent movie in 1925. A theory of my own could be that Pyle had heard so much about Grange that he had to see the man for himself. And when the game between the Illini and Wolverines took place in October of 1924, and Red had single-handedly beat the Wolverines, that's when Pyle had the bright idea of trying to find Grange and asking him if he would be interested in making lots of money. As the story goes, Red and a teammate went to the Virginia Theater to relax and take in a silent film. The usher tapped Red on the shoulder and said that the owner wanted to speak with him. Naturally curious, Red got up out of his seat and went to the owner's office with the usher. Mr. Pyle stuck out his hand to greet the star running back. Red in turn then stuck out his hand to greet the man who in the end turned his life into something larger than life itself. After the deal was done, Red didn't say anything, but had a grin on his face that spanned from ear to ear. Here is author Richard Whittingham. One day, Red Range came in, sat down in the movie theater, and was told by the usher that uh, that C.C. Powell wanted to see him, so I went back and and saw him in his office, and C.C. Powell says, I have an idea for you. How would you like to make a million dollars? According to author Chris Willis, a no-name news reporter noticed that Grange was at a pro football game between the Chicago Bears and Milwaukee Badgers. The no-name reporter assumed that why Grange was there was because he was interested in turning pro after college. Rumors around Chicago started floating about Red going pro. Many fans in the area became upset that Red would even think about going pro. Well, when I came into pro football in the 20s, it was really a nothing game. I took quite a beating in the press and from the different schools for uh, joining pro football. Probably I would have been... Uh, thought more of had I joined the Capone mob in Chicago instead of professional football. I remember President Coolidge uh, greeting us and the senator introduced us as George Hallis and Red Grange with the Chicago Bears. And I remember President Calvin Coolidge's remark. He said, young man, I'm glad to know you. He said, I always like animal acts. Supposedly, Grange and Pyle had a business meeting after the game. I say supposedly because I don't think it's known how Pyle, Grange, and George Hallis all got together to make a deal. 
However, according to Dan Patrick, who narrates the ESPN Sports Century TV program, NFL's 50 Greatest Athletes, found on YouTube, says that it was Pyle and Hallis who had multiple meetings about how to convince Grange to play for the Chicago Bears. As Red stormed through his last season at Illinois, Pyle was meeting with Chicago Bears owner George Hallis whose National Football League was in desperate need of respectability. According to Irv Kupsinet, a news reporter for the Chicago Sun-Times who was featured on ESPN's Sports Century TV program, mentions that Hallis had had his eye on Grange for a long time since Hallis was an alumnus of the University of Illinois. George Hallis was a graduate of the University of Illinois and had his eye on Grange throughout his career. And that was the man he wanted to bring pro football alive and make it a popular sport. At the Sports History Network, we're all about the sports yesteryear, and so we're pleased to introduce you to Row One, an online memorabilia gallery and shop that brings sports history to life. The Row 1 Gallery features over 5,200 gorgeously reproduced prints of team posters, game program covers, game tickets, and advertisements in baseball, pro and college football, pro and college basketball, and more. Any gallery item may be printed in a variety of sizes on wood, metal, canvas, acrylic, or poster paper. It's your choice. In the Row 1 Shop, you can pick from thousands of unique items that feature retro and historical backgrounds dating back to 1876. We have everything from clothing to phone cases to mugs, even shower curtains. Go to sportshistorynetwork.com backslash row one for access to the full row one catalog. When you buy from the gallery today, you can instantly save 15% on your purchase. All you have to do is enter the code SHN15 and your discount will be applied. That's SHN15. That's it. Simple. Save 15% off all your prints in the Row 1 Gallery. Just go to sportshistorynetwork.com backslash row1. That's sportshistorynetwork.com backslash row1. And don't forget to check out all the podcasts on the Sports History Network. It was at the Virginia Theater that Red and CeCe struck a deal that pushed Red into pro football history as the first college player to sign a contract for money. The details of the contract were not known until Red made an announcement after playing his last college game on November 21st of 1925. Here's author Gary Andrew Poole. They kept it secret because they didn't want to ruin uh, Grange's eligibility. Grange didn't want to embarrass the University of Illinois. He didn't want to lose the respect of Bob Zupke. The kid that he considered his son was going to join professional football, which he considered joining a criminal syndicate. Three weeks before at Franklin Field in Philadelphia on Halloween 1925, Grange and the Fighting Illini played a huge game against the University of Pennsylvania. Penn was dominant all season until they met Illinois and Red Grange. Going into the game, Coach Zubke for Illinois was already upset that his team wasn't playing up to their potential. But add in the rumor that Grange was making a deal with Pyle and Hallis to play pro football didn't help matters. Zupke needed Grange to have a big game and dominate Penn. Red's response was, Just watch. After the game, there were many sports writers sitting in awe of the spectacle they had just witnessed. Grange dominated the game with three rushing touchdowns and 363 rushing yards. Illinois upset the Ivy League powerhouse 24 to two. 
It was after this game that Grantland Rice nicknamed Grange the Galloping Ghost. Thanks for listening to the Pigskin Tales podcast. This story will continue in the next episode. This story was written and produced by your host, Ross Bliley. Edited by Nikki Bliley. You can follow me on social media platforms, Facebook and Twitter. You can find the show on most music streaming providers such as Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. You can also email questions or feedback to pigskintailspodcast at gmail.com. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network. For more information, go to sportshistorynetwork.com. The soundtrack is provided by Kevin McLeod of filmmusic.io. Sources of information were found on the web at thevirginia.org, book authors Chris Willis and Gary Andrew Poole, newspaper journalist Mike Pearson from the News Gazette, and YouTube. At the Sports History Network, we're all about sports yesteryear, and so we're so pleased to introduce you to Row One, an online memorabilia gallery and shop that brings your sports history to life anywhere. The Row One Gallery includes over 5,200 gorgeously reproduced prints of team posters, game program covers, game tickets, advertisements, and more in baseball, pro and college football, pro and college basketball, and more. And any gallery item may be printed in a variety of sizes on wood, metal, canvas, acrylic, or poster paper. And in Row One Shop, check out the thousands more of unique Unique items with a retro and historical designs dating back to 1876, including t-shirts, long sleeve shirts, phone cases, mugs, blankets, pillows, towels, and even shower curtains. Go to sportshistorynetwork.com, R-O-W number one, for access to the full Row 1 catalog and for gallery prints and gift items, plus get a 15% discount off all prints on the Row 1 Pictorum Gallery with coupon code SHN15. Follow the link on the show notes.